Hello friends of the internet variety. I am back. It's Broomstick88, also known as MJ. Thank you so much for coming to join me on my channel for my 100th video. Super exciting, super exciting. And as you might notice, things are a little different in here. So I've been thinking about doing a video like this for a really long time. And I thought the 100th video would be like that would be the perfect time. This is the perfect time to do something a little spooky. So, October's approaching. You guys know Halloween's my favorite holiday ever. I would give up Yule for a second Halloween. Um, big fan. I I have a lot of... So let me, let me start from the beginning. I first got on YouTube as after watching all these beautiful videos and all this cool stuff. And Graveyard Girl was like a huge inspiration, but I didn't see her makeup videos. I saw her paranormal videos first. And this was like a couple years ago. And that's the type of videos that I always searched for. And then like I always did my makeup and I was like, oh shit, you know, maybe I should do a makeup, look up makeup videos and oh, glam and gore, but still spooky stuff. And that was really like kind of where I got started being interested in makeup was the paranormal channels kind of pulled me in. And I thought that I would share some of my own stories and I have lots of them. So I will, uh, I'll probably be able to make a few of these videos if you guys like them. If you don't, I might just make them anyways because I like them. So let me give you guys some background. I believe very firmly in the spirit world and I believe very firmly that the veil between the spirit world and our world can be crossed by certain individuals and it can be felt by us. Um, little kids, I think, are particularly sensitive to it. Dogs are particularly sensitive to it. One of my dogs is a little bit older and he's been um, really sensitive lately um, to Frank, who's my house ghost. To I get along fine with Frank and I'm not worried about him. But um, my mom used to work with uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren. She went on a couple of investigations with them and I had met them several times as a child and uh, they, were, they were really... Uh, Ed's passed now and, and Lorraine is, is quite old. I don't believe she investigates anymore, but they really were like a huge influence for me and uh, they, they made it not scary. I think that's the cool thing for me. They made it not scary at all. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of my meetings with them and an investigation they were on in a home that I lived in. So sit tight. If you don't like this kind of video, I got makeup videos too. So like go check those out. Those are cool. Um, if you do like this kind of video, please tell me in the comments. If you don't tell me in the comments, you don't hit that like button. I don't know. And if I make them, it's because I want to make them, not because people want to see them. And I don't know if that affects my content or all, but yeah. So like, tell me down below, down there, what you think of this type of video. And do you like the setup too, or would you rather just have me sparkly and pink? So let's get cracking. So I'm gonna tell you guys about a home that I lived in um, in the mid 90s. Um, to, to, where do I start with this? There's so much, there's so much. I already like kind of like filmed like half of this and I just was like, no, this is, I need this to be linear so people understand it. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you about a property that I lived in when I was a child with my mother in Connecticut. And I'm not gonna give you the property's actual name or the actual location of it because the current owners use it as a business and they have expressed concerns that if the name of the farm is put out there, people will want to visit it as a haunted attraction and they might lose business from their current paying patrons and it is their source of income. So I'm not going to call it what actually is, we're gonna call it Stillwater. So Stillwater, is this beautiful 187 acre horse farm set in rural Connecticut with a historic building on it and, and miles of trails connected to it. It's, it's gorgeous. And when you pull up to Stillwater, you're gonna drive down this long driveway and it's curvy so you can't see the house. And it's got these, these pines, these decorative pine trees, these evergreens all the way lining it that block the house from view and there's big stone walls and it's just gorgeous. And when I was nine years old, my mom was looking for a different living situation and a different financial situation for us. And 
she got hooked up with this job, I think by a client. My mom did nails for like the um, UConn basket women's basketball team back when they were like huge, like blowing up the country. My mom was their, their nail artist and um, she worked in cosmetology for them as well. And she got hooked up with this job by a client and they needed someone to live on the farm and they needed someone to take care of the horses, keep the place from burning down and keep the house in like good condition. They had a housekeeper, we didn't have to worry about that. So it's owned by two sisters and these two sisters, one of them is a veterinarian and she's finishing out a like specialized degree somewhere out in like the Midwest. And the other one was <laughs> a socialite. <laughs> That's the nice term for her. She was a socialite and she didn't want to live in the house, which was weird to us, but we were like, yeah, whatever. So they say you can live in the carriage barn um, the carriage barn has an apartment built over the top of it and you can live there. It's perfect for us. My mom and I share a room. We've been sharing rooms for years. It's no big deal. And the second I showed up on this property, it was home. It just felt like home. I was meant to be on this property. This property, I think about it every week. It has impacted my life so much. I was meant to be on this property. So we move in and it's, it's perfect and it's amazing and I can run around and play and do whatever I want, but there's no other kids. And the nearest neighbor is like miles away. Um, the nearest neighbor is not someplace I can walk to. There, there's no, unless someone comes to the farm, it's just you out there. So they have big, beautiful show horses and lots of people riding. So during the daytime, there's people here and there, but a lot of the time as a kid, it's just me. And my mom and I are living there and the, one, the veterinarian had told us, if you see Eliza, just ignore her and we're like wow we get the housekeeper doesn't speak english but that's really fucking rude like we're not just gonna ignore this lady that's awful and we're like oh okay and we're both thinking like yeah no we're not gonna just ignore this this woman when she comes by but we never see the housekeeper because i'm at school and i'm still going to catholic school at this point and my uh my my mom is has got taking care of the horses and then she goes to her second job as a cosmetologist and we're just, we never run into her. So it's not a big deal, we don't think about it for, for a long time. Um, and we're, we're there for about a month or so and we don't really notice anything. And then we, we're kinda here, we're kinda there, we're kinda here, we're kinda there. We don't really notice anything. And um, we're just not there a lot. Like my mom gets up in the morning, she takes care of the horses, gets them out, takes me to my private school, which is like, 45 minutes away, um, drops me off, goes to her job, picks me up at the end of the day. Maybe we visit friends, go get food, something like that. We're back, she lets the horses back and she does this, she does that. We're never at this house unless we're taking care of the horses or going to bed, like that's it. And on the weekends, it's just me and I'm outside the whole time or I'm riding my pony or I'm you know, at my grandparents' house or at a friend's house, we're just never there. And then I get diagnosed with ADHD which I don't know if you could tell. Um, I get diagnosed with ADHD. And at the time, my Catholic school didn't have the resources and legally didn't have to keep me there. And, and we'd had several run-ins with them before. Um, but having the ADHD, they just kind of said, hey, you, you gotta go. And my mom was like, yeah, that's fine. We don't need to pay for this anyways. And it happens that the local school in, in the town where this, this house is, is phenomenal. It's, it's like the, the charter school before charter schools were really like a big thing and everything's hands-on and for my ADHD, like they're totally prepared for it. They're like willing to work with us. They were amazing. I had the best time at that school. I had friends and I had a really hard time making friends as a kid and I had friends and they wanted to hang out with me and they wanted to be around me and I was cool and it was awesome. But on the bus ride, I would hear people when they dropped me off at my house, the whispers. That, oh, I can't believe she lives there. Aren't you scared? I wouldn't want to live there. I would never go to a sleepover at her house. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, what is your problem? It's, it's cool. It's like the coolest house ever. And they're like, yeah, no, we're not going to visit you. Like at all. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'll go to your house, but you guys won't come here. Like, yeah, no, we're not coming in there. And after like weeks of this, finally I'm like, what is the deal? And they're like, yeah, your house is haunted. 
they have a ghost that walks up and down the stairs. Like, it's terrifying. I don't want to, I'm not going in there. Oh, I've never seen anything. So, like, cool. But at the same time, I'm like, I love ghost stories. This is going to be so cool. We lived, we've already lived in haunted houses before. We've always had ghosts. It's never been an issue. But I, like, never was really, like, into them. It was just, like, a thing that I knew was fine. Like, my parents always describe ghosts as, like, hey, there's people that are dead that are still hanging out and they're fine. Um, so it was never a problem for me. And this was just, just part of my life. So no one wanted to come visit me at school. And my mom is still working a lot, but I'm home now more because there's not so much commuting for us. She, you know, she's not having to go back and forth as far. I'm, you know, right there. So it's, it's just not that big of a deal. We're home more. And we're really enjoying this property. Just, it just felt so good to be there. Like we belonged there. I don't know if she felt the same way, but I know I felt that way. When we eventually moved out of this home, I cried and cried and like, I just, it was heartbroken. I was heartbroken to leave this property. And I, I still am a little heartbroken that I'm not close enough to it to just feel it. I, I, I feel the need to be around this property. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever felt that way, but it's like, it's intense. Um, so moving forward, one day, my mom and I are looking for the dogs. We cannot find the dogs. We have this dog, Francis, and his mother, Freya. And Freya is a black poodle. And Francis is a black poodle mixed with an old English sheepdog because Freya went and visited the farm next door years before and Francis. So we have Freya and Francis. We cannot find them. We're looking all over. We don't go in the main house all that often because we don't really need to. And it's a historic property and there's a lot of really expensive shit that we can't afford to replace. So we just don't go over there that much. My mom's like, I'm gonna go check the house out. So she, I'm walking around downstairs looking for, for the dogs and mom's walking around looking for the dogs and she's yelling and yelling and yelling. And we hear, oh, we hear this little dog whimper. We're like, oh, okay. Where are you guys? Where are you guys? So we, my mom walks out and getting goosebumps just thinking about it because it's such like a, like a life changing moment for us. And um, that and I have a ghost in my house too. He might be listening. He's chill. Um, so we go to the stairs and we look up this set of stairs. And the, I don't know if you've ever been in an old New England colonial home. The stairs are very narrow. And they're very steep. So we look up and Freya and Francis are standing there and there's a woman standing between them and she's got her hands placed on them, just like on their necks. And my mom's like, that's not the housekeeper. And we're standing there and my mom goes, hello? And the woman just kind of looks at us and she's, she's not, not malevolent or anything like that, just kind of looking at us. She's got her hands on the dogs. And my mom and I realized that we can see through the lower portion of this woman. And, and that maybe Eliza is not the housekeeper. So my mom kind of freaks out a little bit and is like, Fran, Francis, you need to come here right now. And the woman looks down at the dogs and she just kind of lifts her hands and the dogs come running down the stairs and she's gone. We look back up and she's gone. And my mom and I are like, oh, I really don't think that Eliza's the housekeeper. I'm pretty sure. So my mom calls the veterinarian owner and says, so Eliza's not the housekeeper. <laughs> Oh, you ran into her. We were kind of hoping that you wouldn't. Do you guys like, well, we'll just pay you if you want to go right now. And my mom's like, no, like, that's fine. Like, we don't mind living here. You just should have been open with us about this. Like, we're cool living with ghosts. And the woman's like, mind blown. You'll stay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So she, um, we stay. And we start having, at this point, more run-ins. Because I think Eliza's now kind of been comfortable with us and knows that we're not gonna freak out. So she's not as, as like shy with us. And there had been other things that the owners like weird requests, like don't go in the basement unless you're doing laundry. Cool, okay, you like nothing down there. You just don't want us down there. We're thinking safety hazard. Um, the red room, which was a room at the very front of the home. Don't go in the red room. Um, keep it, the door closed and locked. Don't go in the red room, so. Maybe they have something fancy or expensive or something that they don't want us to touch in there. Fine, we don't need to go in the red room. Everyone needs their private spaces. Um, use a flashlight when you're walking up from the barn because the barn's about, about a 
foot, or two football fields from the back of the house. And it's up a hill. And we're like, safety issues again. Don't want us to fall and get hurt and sue them. Cool. But there's all these weird little rules. Um, don't go in the attic. Um, don't go in my office. So we got the don't go in my office thing. But we're just like, fine, whatever. So we, um, the, the town people kind of start getting a little more comfortable with us and they start telling us like a little like, oh, you have the ghost that walks up the stairs and stuff like this. And we're like, oh, we know there's a ghost. And they're like, no, 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 like there's a lot of ghosts. We're like, we've seen a lies. And they're like, yes, there's more than her. We're like, okay, cool. Well, we haven't seen him yet, so like whatever. And we start having little run-ins with Eliza where you know I'm in the house's kitchen and I'm looking out at the rose garden and there's a woman walking around the rose garden that's not me or my mom <laughs> and we're like oh and then she's just not there anymore or you know we hear someone walking around upstairs knowing full well we are the only people in this home and that the only way into this home is, is through our living space so like no there's there's no one else there but it still doesn't bother us um and we get to the point where we're really comfortable with Eliza and we just kind of like come in the house house kind of thing. You're like, oh, hey, Eliza, and like, whatever. So it doesn't change our lives momentously at this point, but like it, there's some little changes, little things that are different. And one day, and nothing's scary at this point. There's no scary stuff. So one day I'm down at the barn, my mom's already up at the house and uh, it's getting, it's like dusk ish like not dark but like it's dusk it's it's time for me to go inside and like do homework and stuff like that so i um i leave the barn and i'm walking up the hill it's a really steep hill and it's it's about two football fields and i'm like nine years old and i'm a shrimpy little kid so it's a hall so i'm walking up this hill and i look over and there's a couple of people and they're sitting on the bench next to this huge pond that's at the farm. And they're just sitting on a bench and I'm like, all the, uh, all the boarders are out. Like they're, everyone's left for the day. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I like, I look over and I'm trying to see if anyone's truck is parked over in the parking area for boarders and there's no one's truck is there. And I look back and they're gone. I'm like, oh, okay. And like, I run up the hill I tell my mom, 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 I saw the ghost. I saw the, there's two people that sit on the bench. And she's like, yeah, I've, I've seen them a few times. Like, but I think they're friendly. I think they're like Eliza. I think they're friendly. I'm like, okay. Um, so the next time is I'm in the barn and I just put my pony away and I finished grooming them. And I, I, um, hear something like something get knocked over and then then lots of things are getting knocked over and I'm in the very back stall of the barn and I'm hearing crashes and booms and bangs and and it's dark out it's a little bit later it's just starting to get dark out it's like a little past dusk and as I'm running through the barn to try to get out of the barn the hay bales are falling over. I don't know if I even have told my mom all about this or I might have when I was a kid and like it just never came up again, but hay bales are falling over and like saddles are falling off the racks. The barns get trash as I'm in the barn. And and I'm not really watching it happen because I am booking it out of there. Like goal is get out of this barn. And I hear all this stuff coming behind me and it's it's terrifying. And I run up to the house, I'm like mom, 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 mom. And I don't remember if she wasn't there or whatever, but. I don't remember discussing this with her, but I remember being scared. And that was kind of a, a big deal for me. Um, and that was the first time where I was like, oh, maybe this isn't all like sunshine and rainbows and like happy Casper shit. But you know, it, it happened. And I really was more cautious around the property. Um, there was one time where I was out with the dogs and I was in the woods and I had my pony with me and I heard someone riding and I thought it was one of the boarders and, and two people on horses were crashing through the woods where there was no trail and they were fox hunting. We didn't do fox hunting on the property and, and I, the horses, you couldn't see their legs but you could hear them and it was 
just stuff like that started happening. And like my mom and I are running into this stuff all the time. You know, things are moving in the kitchen when we're not there. Stuff is, you know, we, we come in and, and you know, our laundry baskets are tipped over and spread all over the place and we're just, it's building and building and building and building and building. And finally my mom's like, oh, I think we need to talk to somebody. So we ask, um, the owner of the property, the, the veterinarian, we ask her, is it okay if we, we call somebody in? And she's like, yeah, um, just be respectful of the property and stuff like that. Now keep us updated. My mom happens to know Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now you guys might know them from The Conjuring and Annabelle, um, but Ed and Lorraine Warren are some of the most famous demonologists ever in the world. And my mom had gone on a couple of investigations with them and knew one of their camera people and said, hey, will you come out to our home? And they said, we'll put you on the list. We have a lot of investigations, but we'll come out. We'll come out. We'll just, we'll put you on the list. Do you feel in danger? We said, no, we don't feel like we're in danger. We just, like stuff is happening. It's happening all the time now. And you're like, okay, no, like that's okay. Just if you feel in danger, call us back. But like, we've got you on the list. Okay. And... So I'm gonna tell you about their visit in a second half video, but I'm gonna tell you about one of the scarier incidents we had connected to the farm. So, um, as I said, I'm not gonna give too much information that you could identify the farm with, so I'm gonna use the last name Clifford for Eliza's last name. Um, it's not her last name, Eliza is her first name, Clifford is not her last name. Um, and we're at, we're at Stillwater, we've been here for about five months now. And there's this really cool cemetery on Cemetery Road is the name of the road. And it's really cool old cemetery. Like no one's getting buried in there anymore. It, it's, it's so old and it's just, it's defunct, but it, it's kept up. And my mom and I are like, come on, let's go see if we can find more stuff about Eliza. Let's go see if we can find her gravestone. Like that's where she's, the Cliffords are buried. So we go to this and it's, it's like midday. And we go, and we've gone to graveyards before. My mom, like I said, grew up in a haunted house. It's not a huge deal for us. And um, I'm a kid though, so it's kind of scary. It's a little creepy. I'm nine years old, it's a little bit creepy. So we, we go to this cemetery and we park the car and we're walking around and it's beautiful. And we find the Clifford plots and there's like a big like, tomb and there are all these little plots around it and stuff like that and then like off to the side there's like they're like servants and butlers and housekeepers and stuff like that had their own plots that the family paid for they're a really nice family and so we're, we find it and we take some rubbings with you know crayon and paper and we're, we're just walking around because it's really pretty and my mom she feels a shift in how the trip is going and I remember this because she has been hanging out with me and we're chatting and we're talking and we're laughing. And then she's not as fun anymore. And her hand kind of comes down on my shoulder and she's like, I think we should go back to the car. And my mom, my mom's a badass. My mom was a army combat medic. She was, you know, she's, she's, she's a tough lady and it takes a lot to scare her but she's now gone from fun mom to firm mom. And she was the head of security at one of the largest malls in Connecticut and dealt with some scary stuff um, between that mall and the army and other jobs that she had had. And she, she puts her hand on my shoulder and it's time to go. And I'm kind of like, okay. And I feel the shift and we're walking towards the car and she's kind of starting to push me a little bit faster. And she's like, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I'm like, okay, short legs can only go so far. And then as she's pushing me kind of to the car, I look back and there is this fog. There is this so thick you could cut it with a knife, gray fog rolling down the hill at us. Um, ugh, ugh. This was scary to me. So this fog is rolling down the hill at us. And my mom was like, get in the car. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm getting in the car. I'm getting in the car, I'm getting in the car and this fog is rolling down the hill at us and we are getting in the car and the car doesn't want to start. And fog is coming at the car and my mom's like, my mom is swearing at this point. My mom's swearing like a sailor at this point. And she's like, she has lost that, like parents have this moment where they're like, I am not scared because I am a parent and I must get safe for my child. And my mom was like, fog, 
no, scared, we gotta go. And so finally the car starts, my mom and I are peeling out of there and this big ass stag is just at the entrance, just big antlers and he's just standing there and he just doesn't run from the car. He's at the entrance and as we blow past this thing, he just watched us and the fog rolled over and just covered this stag and then you couldn't see the graveyard. And all of a sudden it's, it's fairly dark and we didn't think we'd been there that long, but it's dark out. And we're like, we weren't, we were there for like, it was the middle of the day. Like, and we're looking like it's nighttime and we're driving back to the house. And that night, everything in the house was alive. It was not alive, but everything was going and everything is and we're like, this is now not fun for us anymore. So, my mom, like, we kind of just cloister ourselves up in the bedroom and we're, we're done. Like, we're, we're just done. And it wasn't, it was scary. That was scary. Um, and that's when things got really active. And that's where sometimes we didn't feel so safe anymore. Um, and I think in our next video, I'm going to tell you about some of the more intense things that happened. But if you guys like this, um, we're gonna end it right there for a moment. Put comments down below if you wanna see more of this stuff. If you're excited to hear the second half of the story, let me know and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's probably one of my favorite stories to tell. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Now I have goosebumps. Mm -hmm.